so this is my gluten hip activation series. These sequences of exercises and movements are to initiate contractibility and activation of the glutes and the hips while also engaging the core muscles with the process of intra-abdominal pressurization. This is a good way to warm up for any type of performance activity. Also, it's used as a corrective exercise or tool for lower back strains or even injuries. So here we go. Okay, so the first movement we're gonna do is banded straight leg sidewalks. You can grab a perform better band, you can grab a hip circle, anything that's gonna actually give you tension as you move laterally to initiate the glutes and the hips. So here we go. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take a band, we're gonna put it on our ankles or mid shin. Depending on how much tension do you want and, and torque of the hip, you wanna make sure that you're getting enough tension on the hip but not overstretching or, and, and causing any type of fluent motion side to side, right? We wanna make sure that we're nice and stiff and we're stepping in a straight line. So if the band is tight, bring that band up a little bit higher on the legs, even maybe even going over the knees so you can make sure that you stay nice and straight, nice and tall, and you're walking in a nice neutral fashion. So here we go. All right, so now all you have to do, we're gonna keep our legs nice and tight. We're gonna step, keeping our feet pointed forward. Core is engaged, making sure you're not swaying back and forth. So here we go, step. You're gonna go about five to 10 reps going down, and then five, 10 reps going back. Good. That was the band sidewalk. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the single leg glute bridge. With this glute bridge, we're gonna go ahead and bring our knee to our chest, hugging that knee close to our chest so we can get good activation on the opposite side glute while stretching out the hip flexor on that near side as well. Also, you're able to initiate more stability and, and mainly working on contralateral stability as you're doing this movement. So this is how it goes. Okay, so notice how I took my breath and I braced every rep. You wanna make sure you're getting good intra-abdominal pressurization, breathing diaphragmatically throughout the entire lumbar spine as you go to bridge up. Don't try to flail, and I don't want you moving in a, in a fast motion or trying to get through the movement. You wanna make sure that every rep counts and you're doing it as efficiently as possible. That was the single leg glute bridge. Okay, so another movement in the glute hip and activation series is the single leg glute bridge leg whip. This is a two-part movement. Also, it helps with mobilization of the adductors and inner thigh and hips. Also, initiation of stabilization in the glute itself. So here it is. First thing you're gonna do, plant the foot, flex the toes. You're gonna go ahead and palms up in a supinated position. Straight leg on the opposite leg, flexing the foot. As you do that, your head's going to come down, we're going to lock in that, that spine, drawing down that chin, bridge up, from there, you're going to keep that bridge, and then go ahead and abduct out, drive in. Okay, so main things you wanna be careful of. When you go to abduct out, make sure that your opposite knee does not cave in or valgus. We wanna make sure we're keeping good neutral positioning of the hips, making sure that we're not swaying back and forth, making sure we're keeping good intra-abdominal pressurization or core stabilization, and making sure that you're getting a straight line path to the side of your body as you go back and forth with that leg whip. That was the single leg glute bridge leg whip. Try it out.
Okay, so the next movement in the glute and hip activation series is the fire hydrant leg extension. Here it is. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get in a quadruped or hands and knees position, making sure your back is flat and you're keeping a good neutral spine while making sure you're getting good intra-abdominal pressurization, breathing diaphragmatically. Every rep, you're going to go ahead and take your breath and brace out into the obliques. It looks like this. Your hands should be in line with your shoulders. Your knees should be in line with your hips, about shoulder width apart or slightly outside shoulder width apart. From there, you're gonna draw down, almost like you're screwing in your hands into the floor, activating your lats. You're gonna keep your head as long as possible going forward. From there, you're gonna go ahead and abduct the knee out to the side here and then straighten the leg as hard as you can. Squeeze the quad. From there, tap the ground, initiate that glute squeeze, bring it back. Again. As you can see, I start to shake after the third rep. This is very demanding, so you don't want to do a lot of repetitions with this exercise or this movement. I would say about five to 10 reps are plenty. Do this for one set right after your glute bridges and you'll be ready to go. Okay, so the next exercise is the bird dog. Now with the bird dog, this can be done for multiple different reasons. This can be done for multiple different aspects of training and for rehabilitation. Um, a lot of times this is good for back strains or back health. Also, it's good to activate the core and contralateral stability. So this is how you set up for the bird dog. You're gonna get in the quadruped positioning. So hands and knees, just like the kick out. Hands about shoulder width. Back is flat, making sure we're maintaining that flat back and hips squared up. Our knees are about where our, where our hands are, right underneath our hips. Then again, we're gonna go ahead and screw in the hands, activating the lats making sure our head is long, we're not here, okay? From there, you're gonna take your hand and your opposite leg, and you're gonna go ahead and drive them out. So it looks like this. I'm gonna take my breath and brace. Now notice, I don't crunch in to the bird dog. I don't crunch in and bring my knee or my elbow to my knee. I'm trying to maintain a neutral spine throughout the entire movement. I'm not swaying back and forth or side to side, and I'm definitely not crunching in or getting any type of spinal flexion in this movement. All right, this is a main movement for any type of warm up drills or for rehabilitation. Test this out, let me know how it goes. Okay, so the last movement in the glute, hip, and core activation series is going to be a strict bear crawl. Now, what this is going to do is going to initiate contralateral stability with coordination. You're going to go ahead and step with the opposite arm and opposite leg, maintaining a neutral spine and squared up hips as you go forward. Make sure that when you go to step, your hand and your foot meet the ground at the same time. You should feel your obliques fire with every step you take. So here's how you set up, getting a quadruped positioning, same as the bird dog. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna get up off of our knees about an inch or two off the ground, maintaining that neutral spine. Then from there, you're gonna step with the opposite arm, opposite leg, taking your brace right there. Then again. Okay, so make sure when you go to do this, your knee doesn't travel outside of your elbow. You wanna also make sure that you're not overextending at the hip. So you wanna keep that neutral spine, but also make sure that you're keeping a 90 degree angle on the legs when you step away. You can do this for about 10, 10 yards, five to 10 yards, and then go backwards with it, or just turn around and go back the other way going forward. This is the last sequencing 
of the hip, the glute hip and activation series. And to be honest, this is one of the best activation tools for coordination, balance, and contralateral stability. Test this out.